Hello and welcome to the short presentation about what the students of the Department of Conservation and Restoration of Works of Art from Zagreb Academy of Fine Arts have been doing at workshops organized in Dubrovnik. Let's start with a very short resume of why we are here in the first place. On the 15th of April 1979, Dubrovnik was struck by a devastating earthquake with a magnitude of about 7.0 on a Richter scale. This meant quite a large volume of devastation for the historical monuments, many of which required structural sanation. Since the Baroque Cathedral of the Blessed Virgin itself suffered damage, it was one of those objects. Along with structural sanation came archaeological researches around the base of the cathedral and under its entire structure. As expected, archaeologists discovered the foundation of the medieval Romanesque cathedral, completely devastated in the 17th century earthquake. As for the unexpected part, remains of an even older, pre-Romanesque basilica were discovered, along with portable finds like coins, ceramics and stone fragments. Archaeologists and conservators in the 80s did the best they could regarding the storage of found movable objects at the time, but it is considered to be inadequate by today's standards. What's important for our part of the project in particular are about 10,000 fragments of plaster, a lot of which contain different wall painting layers dating from Romanesque and pre-Romanesque times. Some of the paintings they belong to are still visible on site. Discovering the old Dubrovnik cathedrals is the research and education project on which many students from our university have been working on since 2015. Students of the Department of Conservation and Restoration of Works of Art from Zagreb Academy joined the project in 2018. Here you can see one of the photographs of the students during the workshops. So far, students from our department have been working only with plaster fragments. Some of the more important processes that are currently in progress are the storage optimization, general documentation of each individual fragment, including photo documentation, and not to forget a digital database that is currently in development along with nomenclature standardization. As we fill in the database, we will see what are the odds of doing any type of partial reconstruction. Of course, all parts of the process are, if possible, done simultaneously. We don't want to disturb fragments by manipulation multiple times unnecessarily. For example, this means that while the contents of one box are photographed, others are moved to a new box, some are in the description process, etc. The first and the most important thing to do was to optimize the conditions in which fragments were kept in. When the workshop first started in 2015, all the fragments were moved from original boxes to new carton boxes with styrofoam balls. But since there was a lack of storage space, those boxes had to be put underground, beneath the cathedral floor, where humidity reaches extremely high levels, making it the perfect place for mold growth. Mold and humid atmosphere started to cause boxes to decompose. As we see in the picture 12 here, the boxes with fragments in polystyrene were being moved away from the poor environment. Boxes have now been moved to the better conditioned space in the building on the church property nearby. Carton boxes in the worst condition are emptied as soon as possible and fragments are moved to the new and safer plastic crates, separated by polyethylene foam which is clean, inert and in every way a safer storage option. To make a database in the steps that follow, it is necessary to know exactly what is what in terms of fragment stratigraphy. This means that certain researches had to be made, and they included, for example, radiocarbon dating, petrographic analysis and XRF for pigments. The results of these researches helped understanding the general composition of different stratigraphic layers of plaster. One of our beloved colleagues also wrote an extensive thesis on this topic and contributed greatly to further research. In these pictures, you can see some of the standard plaster types, which are visibly different in composition and date from different periods. As for the painting layer, setting the nomenclature of colors and ornaments is still in development. As mentioned, 
putting fragments in new plastic crates, documentation and general nomenclature standardization is crucial for further steps, which include building the database and making any type of reconstruction. Database development is a process that has started recently in collaboration with the Department for Information and Communication Sciences at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences and is closely related to the standardization of nomenclature. We have started building a database in Microsoft Excel software. For each fragment, categories include types of plaster, number of plaster layers, colors present on painted layer, fragment condition, and so on. All of the data might later be transferred to a different type of database. Each fragment will also have its individual picture added, and that is something we are currently also working on. General plan for this step is to build a database with set standards, so any of the categories can be extracted to digitally regroup fragments that used to belong with the same wall painting with a large possibility. Paintings on site will surely help build database categories, since many of the fragments in storage space are already known to be compatible with them. This can also be simply determined visually in most cases, as shown in these pictures. The workshop has been serving as an educational program for multiple generations of students where we learned a lot about the importance of documentation, especially in such a large-scale project. What's more important, we have learned a lot about the importance of functional teamwork, preparation and thinking ahead. Of course, as conservators restorers, our main focus lays on the general preservation of any object's integrity. Partially, it's about the integrity of each individual fragment, and that is why we are doing the storage optimization part. But let's not forget that in this case, conserving the integrity means not just physical conservation of individual fragments, but also conservation of the collection as a whole. It used to be a part of something greater long before our time. And that is why we are making the database and taking all the necessary related steps. It's also worth mentioning that most of the pictures shown in the presentation are taken by the students working on the project throughout the years. This project has and will continue to contribute historical knowledge about the cathedral, but also the history of Dubrovnik. The one definite hope for the future is to finish all of the processes that are currently in action. Based on everything mentioned in the previous slide, it could be said that we are hoping to make some sort of digital reconstruction. Physical reconstruction is also a possibility, but endangering fragments integrity must be avoided. Unfortunately, we will know to what extent any type of reconstruction actually is possible only after the database is fully updated. We can say that it surely is possible, since even the first researchers noticed similarities between the fragments and manually reconstructed some of the images. Unlike the standard puzzle, which is known to be completable with absolute certainty, we only have an unknown percentage of pieces that used to form full paintings many centuries ago. Despite this, we will continue and hope for the best results. If everything goes as planned, any successful and more extensive reconstruction will surely be published in some form. Here we see already existing successful reconstruction trials made by connecting of the printed scans of painted fragment surfaces. The book mostly used in the making of this presentation was a monograph called The Cathedral of the Assumption of the Virgin in Dubrovnik. It contains general historical information about the cathedral, once considering art history and church inventory. It is available in English edition. Other sources mentioned here are mostly available online. In my name, in the name of my mentor and, of course, the Department of Conservation and Restoration of Works of Art of Zagreb Academy of Fine Arts, I would like to thank you for taking your time and following this presentation.